Earlier this week, a passenger died and several others were injured on um, after a Singapore Airlines flight experienced extreme turbulence. Obviously, this is really heartbreaking to hear. It's also very scary if you are someone who does travel via plane. I am curious, though, how does turbulence go from an inconvenience that some experience on a flight to something that causes injury and in this case was deadly? Well, there's different grades of uh, turbulence from different physical forces. Uh, one of those is thunderstorms can be a very extreme case uh, it were, and, and others are they say clear turbulence and those are more from disturbed flow, large scale flow, but also uh, clear air turbulence can also be associated with areas of, of deep thunderstorms uh, because when you, when you have a strong updraft that causes these thunderstorms, it disturbs the flow and some of these flows can be in layers. Some of the layers in the atmosphere are more stable than others. So, so when you rip through the, all those layers, so the stable layers, like when, you, when I'm talking about stable, that means if you push it up or push it down, it's gonna have a restoring force, it's gonna bring it back. So if you disturb that flow, it's gonna emanate. Kind of similar to like if you ever stir a, 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 a water in a, in a bucket and then you move that cir circulation you see waves em emanating from that from that uh, flow. The atmosphere works the same way. It's compressible instead of incompressible like water, but it works the, the similar similar way. So in a case like uh, a, a, a plane going in even nearby an, a thunderstorm complex can be affected, even though they think it's coming out of thin air because they're not going through the cloud. But depending on that state that layer, they can emanate farther or sh or shorter away from that uh, that thunderstorm complex, depending on the environment. Clean air turbulence is the most dangerous type of turbulence. Can you talk about why? Well, as I mentioned, it is it, it like it, it looks like it's coming out of nowhere because you're not going through a cloud. All of a sudden, bang! It hits you. It's, it's invisible. It's it's kind of like waves in water, except for water you can see it. Air you cannot. Uh, sometimes you can see it. And like a cirrus deck, if you look on a, on a nice day, you'll see wave patterns in the in the clouds. That's a gravity wave. So, an air. Oh, go ahead. go ahead. No, you go ahead. <laughs> so anyway, if if a plane went through that th those areas where there's waves, they might get a little bit of turbulence from that, and that's about the only way you would see it. And clouds look different from a, from where you are in a, in a cockpit versus when you're seeing it from the ground. So there's that so, too. So is there any way for a pilot to see this before they're in it? Or is it just a sort of freak accident because it is essentially invisible? There, well, there actually you cannot see it with the naked eye, but there is guidance. There's, there's ways that we can forecast it that have very reasonable quality uh, that can de uh, depict uh, what's, what could happen in it. it uh, predicts, like I mentioned, the stability of the layers. It the the uh, numerical models predict that. And then we apply uh, algorithms to those uh, known algorithms that, uh, that work, that predict the, the intensity of that turbulence, depending on what that flow and the stability is like. So on some of these things that can happen is like shear is, an, is one, one very um, high probability of causing a, a turbulence. It basically makes wave. You ever see white caps on on water? It's kind of like breaking waves. Uh, so the, the atmosphere works the same, except for you can't see them in the in the atmosphere. So that's where you really have to uh, rely on uh, these very sophisticated numerical weather models. There's several of them. The United States has ECMWF from from Europe. They're very high quality, and if you if you can predict what the atmospheric conditions are like, you have a great chance of predicting where that, that turbulence may occur. And usually when a pilot finds him, him or herself in this type of turbulence, is there any indication of how long the average is that it usually lasts or does it just depend? Oh, sure. You, uh, with, these, with these forecasts, you can, you can actually plot, plan. Uh, there's there's two, two levels. There's one of them is the planning so you can look ahead uh, ahead of the time and and plot plot your course so that you avoid the turbulence or tactical and this is some kind of a nowcast product that is that is a piped right to the cockpit 
that that maybe the uh, the pilots can react 